G'day everybody, Dan and Matt here from GI Energy. Today we're talking about Fronius new battery, the Reserver. Been a long time coming this one, hasn't it? We're just trying to work out and, and let everybody know. Basically the question, is the Fronius Reserver any good? Matt, simple answer before we go into the specifics. I think it, it'll be good for, for certain applications. Absolutely, there's a lot of Fronius inverters installed. Um, so we'll certainly maybe tick that box there. Um, so yeah, potentially will be, a, will be a good option. I think it's going to be a good product with some limitations. Yeah. Um, so to elaborate on that, to give you a bit of a background, Fronius is one of our favorite brands. It's, yeah. um, I've got one at home. They're a great inverter. Um, I've got, got, got two at home. You've got two at home. <laughs> there you go. You've always got a one at me, haven't you? Exactly. Um, <laughs> but they have been brilliant. They've, they've been the best inverter. Yeah. They've been a little bit more expensive than others, but it's been justified. Yeah. Reliability, efficiency. They've been around forever. They tick yeah. all the boxes. So massive kudos there to Fronius. I think they're, they're a great brand and they have uh, had a partnership with BYD up until now um, where they've been basically partnered with BYD in terms of the, the support for their batteries. Yeah. So you've always been able to have a Fronius inverter with a BYD battery. Now they have their own, um, as I said, called, called the Reserver. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through all the good stuff and then we'll go through all the stuff with that's maybe not so good. Yeah. Um, and as usual, we'll just try and do a um, as honest, non-biased, feedback as we can yeah um, so. we're definitely not associated with them in any way other than we love the inverters um, so to start off with as I said it's Fronius Fronius have been great it should be a good product yeah in that so. respect absolutely the quality of the inverter has been um, yeah unbeatable for more than a decade yeah absolutely support obviously innovation in terms of the inverter size with the fan and the cooling system and everything else so if you've got a Fronius Gen 24 inverter that this will pair with, I think it's going to be a, a, a choice worth at least consideration anyway. So if you've got that existing setup, it's ideal. It's quite slim. Um, yeah. So it'll uh, sit about 170 mil deep. Um, if you've got a, yeah, it could be wall or floor mounted as well. So solid option in terms of how it's going to look and, and sort of sizing. Um, I think that'll be pretty good. And if you've got it obviously with the Gen 24, if there's a power outage, it will black start as well. So if you had an outage over a number of days, um, obviously then it can continue to generate solar, um, obviously when, when solar generation is available. Yeah. So a little bit different than if you'd have um, a third party uh, battery with, with an inverter AC coupled in that yeah. sense. So that'll be pretty awesome. And um, it can do yeah three phase backup as well. So for a house like yours would, would be pretty ideal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some, some, some good features there. You don't need a combiner box between the, the stacks or the towers. And um, it can go quite a distance away from the existing inverter. So it can go up yeah. to 30 meters away. So some of those houses where you may not be able to find a suitable location for the battery sometimes, maybe a bit more flexibility. I think that's probably un unfair yeah. to say. And um, I think one of the, the, the better points that I've seen is that the warranty is going to be 10 years, but 80% depth of discharge. So slightly higher than other competitors. So that's definitely going to be a, a, a pretty good thing. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I think it's usually about 70, isn't it? 70%. Yeah. Um, the black start, just to, to elaborate a little bit with that, that just means that if you've got a battery installed and the grid power fails, there are certain setups where once you've depleted your battery to zero, even if the sun's shining in the morning and the grid hasn't returned, you still won't charge up your battery. Yeah. With this setup, um, you will be able to do that with single and three phase. Yeah. And you can't do that with everything. So that is that's, that's yeah, good. good. Yeah. That is a really good feature, actually. And there are lots of other batteries that do it, but there are some that don't. Um, yeah, everything else you said basically covers it off. And, and, and I just think it's um, being Fronius, it should be well made. Yeah, yeah um, I agree. In terms of the limitations, I said earlier, I think it would be a good product with some limitations. The biggest one is the, 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 the sizing. Yeah. Um, so if you've got a single phase, system with a Fronius Primo Gen 24 inverter, you can only go up to 9.5 kilowatt hours per stack. Yeah. Um, and I think you can do four towers to take it to 38 kilowatt hours in total. Yeah. <clears throat> if you went back a year, you'd probably say, okay, 9.5, maybe that's the average battery size. It's not anymore. No. The average battery size is probably 24 kilowatt hours, yeah. there or thereabouts, um, regardless of single or three phase. And then if you wanted to get to 38, you need four towers. Yeah. So it's slim, as you said, 170 slim. That's impressive. If you've got the bracket there, it takes it to 230. Um, and then you've obviously got to have a space in between the batteries. Yeah. Um, it's not a big space between. I think it was 300 mil, wasn't it, that yeah. Fronis was saying? So it's 
but still you've got to find space for them. Yeah, correct. If it's going in a garage, you have to have a bollard, yeah. presumably next to each one. For, I'd for, expect so, yeah, for the regulations. Yeah, you would do, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd have to have a bollard next to each one, so it gets a bit tricky in mm. that respect. And then um, three phase is a bit better, so three phase you can then go up to 15.7 per stack, and again, you can have four towers, so you can take up to 62.8 kilowatt hours, which is, that's probably bigger than most people need. Yeah. Um, but again, four towers um, takes up a bit of space. It's probably a space thing as much as anything else. And as you said, I think, yeah, if you went back a year before the subsidy was around, before mm. people were looking at maybe a VPP as well for the situation, it may have been correct in terms of sizing. And yeah. it still might be okay. If you're a small user, single phase, nine and a half kilowatt hours, maybe, maybe for three quarters of the year sufficient. Yeah. I think it's just the way the industry battery technology and, and obviously the, the modularity of, of some other brands has, has come on in the past 12 months. Um, obviously, you can do larger stacks of batteries um, in the single tower, single yeah. stack. Yeah. So it's really just looking at what's suitable realistically as well. And obviously, there's other options where you can do 40, 48 kilowatt hours, even on single phase yeah. um, in the same stack. In one stack. Yeah. So it might be... Um, it might be a, a limitation in terms of your, the space that you have yeah. as well. So it just comes down to obviously what's um, yeah what's applicable, I suppose, there as well. I think to be fair to Fronis as well, it must be so hard to because yeah. they've been designing this battery for a while. Yeah. And when they probably set out and you know rubber stamp the design to go and then take it to manufacture. Yeah. Probably wasn't nine point five was probably okay for a lot of single phase, but as I say, that's changed. Yeah. <clears throat> so now all of a sudden they've got the battery that they designed a year ago yeah and the market just moves so quickly you, you have to feel for them a bit there it's a tricky thing to stay on top of i think it's a, it's also the australian market i think in europe a lot of people do install smaller batteries yeah maybe okay. their demand is lower they have gas they have other you know what i mean other ways mm. of oil oil they'll yeah. say other ways of heating especially in winter yeah and obviously here it's more moving towards that electrification yeah so i think obviously a core part of their business would be being an austrian company would be there mm. so yeah, I believe the average battery installation in, in the UK is 10 kilowatt hours. Is that right? Whereas obviously over here now it's 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 double that, more, if, yeah. if not more. Yeah. Which obviously because of the subsidy, that's obviously nudging everything up anyway. Yeah. And um, because of the power that we use, yeah. like first and foremost. So a lot of swimming pools here, not many in England, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to be in one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th I think that's obviously partly maybe part, you know, part of the conversation as well that it, obviously, they're covering off a, a, a broad geographical area with, with the product, as a lot of them are, obviously, on the market. Yeah, of course. But yeah. obviously, the Australian market, as it is at the moment, with um, just completely booming for battery installations, it's um, yeah, it's got to, got to tick a few boxes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing is uh, Fronius has been very proudly Austrian-made. Yeah. So their inverters have, have, have always been made in their factory in Austria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Partly why it justifies the higher price tag, I think, because yeah. obviously everything's more expensive there, um, but you should get a better product out of it. That's the theory. Yeah. And that's proved to, to be to be correct. Um, this one's made in China, though. Um, so not that's not a negative thing yeah. generally. Most batteries are made in China, and, yeah. and, and, and there's some really, really good products. But, um, yeah, it's been a, quite a big selling point, hasn't it, for Fronius, the Austrian brand, and this one, obviously. Yeah. I think it's just a deviation from where obviously the inverter's made. So I'm sure the quality will, will be will be great, but ultimately it is just that, yeah, slight pivot from obviously where it is. Maybe that's the, the price thing, because obviously if it's made in Europe and then brought over here, with the size of the battery, maybe it's not particularly friendly on the wallet per mm, kilowatt hour. Yeah. So yeah, everything that we use battery-wise is, is pretty much made in China, and there's some awesome stuff made there. Far more innovative than some of the stuff around the world anyway. Yeah. But I guess it's just that slight tweak on, um, on where the inverter's made. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of a different approach in terms of, uh, yeah, obviously where we sort of had Fronius fit into into a lot of um, a lot of jobs. Yeah. The other thing that I would say is a bit of a limitation and Fronius would probably argue that this is a, a, a good thing. I can't get my head around how why it is, but it's the delayed backup. Yeah. So with Fronius BYD, there's always been that delayed backup. Um, so what that basically means is power goes out, with some batteries, you wouldn't even know. Yeah. Um, the only thing that it wouldn't be good for was a UPS for a server room, that type of thing. 
but watching your TV, I don't think your TV would even go off with with, with some of them. Whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but with with this Fronius battery, it's going to be between ten and thirty seconds changeover. Yeah, not terrible. I mean, you can survive for ten seconds without power, and yeah. they would argue that it's good because you now know that the power's cut. Yeah, I would say, well, you'd know anyway because you'd get a notification on your Tesla app. Yeah, um, and you, you tend to just know anyway because things aren't all backed up. But yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, I think that's a bit of a limitation. Yeah, look, I love the fact that some of some of the products are able to do instant backup. It's a question we get asked, and, and, and obviously what what some people are looking for. Yeah, maybe that's not what everybody needs. And as you said, there might be some that think, oh, okay, well, if the power does go out, at least then my lights have turned off, or the the TV's turned off, or something else, or you know, what I mean, whatever that situation might be. But it just feels that obviously it, it it's not particularly innovative when others are, are able to do it, and. Um, yeah, maybe something that, that needs to be looked at potentially. Um, again, depending on the, the installation, because not everyone's looking for backup power. But no, most, that's true. But, but most people are. Yeah. Or at least you, you want to understand what it what it means, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, lastly, in terms of the, the limitations, I think it's a brand new battery. Yeah. Um, and it's probably going to be a good solid product, but there's not much innovation, nothing yeah. groundbreaking happening there. There's no DC. EV integration, no enhanced safety features that we're aware of, other than the, you know, that it's going to be solid and, and safe in the same way as your other leading brands will be. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's 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 new. It's great to see from Fronius, but it's not that innovative, really. No, it, it, I guess it's just it, it's it's just another option to obviously meet the demand of their existing um, inverters that are installed. And obviously, there's yeah. tens of thousands of, of Gen 24s that are installed. So it's it's obviously a product that will suit people that love the brand and um, there's a lot of very loyal people that love Fronius because it is very very good yeah but as you said where some others have really pushed forward so much more with with innovation integration with EVs and, and obviously the plans that, that are in the future there so yeah. it's um yeah I guess I guess my thought as a massive massive Fronius fan over the years is it, it's a good option there but ultimately, it, it's definitely not anything that's groundbreaking if that's what you're seeking with with your battery. It's, yeah. um, it's something that I'm sure will be reliable and, and quality, but it's it's not yeah not pushing things forward in any way, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I think just for me to sum up my opinion is is that to, to basically just um, echo what you said. It's, it's going to be a good product that's going to be well looked after if there are issues. Fronis is a very strong brand. It's not for everyone. Yeah. It's going to be for people that... that fit in with its design limitations. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to install plenty of them. I hope this doesn't seem like we're being hard on Fronius because we're not. I think it will be good, but I also just want to be honest about what it can and can't do. Yeah. So um, it's definitely not going to be for everyone, but I think we'll install a fair few of them and I think people will be happy with them as long as it's designed for them. Yeah, I agree. I think that's fair. Cool. Well, we'll follow this up once we've installed a bunch of them. It is obviously brand new and not not able to be installed just yet. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll feed some more info once we get some more, but um, hopefully that's been helpful for now. Thanks. Thanks.